Hey guys, my name is Lewis with PremiumBeat.com and today we're going to have a look at Newton for After Effects. Newton is a 2D physics simulator for After Effects. 2D in the sense of that it will only animate objects along the X and along the Y axis and physics simulator in how it will automatically animate objects dependent on the user-defined physics settings. For example, if we wanted this shape layer to drop and bounce as a tennis ball, we would open the position and rotation panels and perhaps do something like this. Although as this was just a five second job, I'm sure it doesn't look that great. However, if we were to bring this into Newton, set the properties and click play, we have a much more realistic sense of movement. So this is going to be a basics tutorial in the sense of that we're going to get you to crawl more so than to run. Because while I think that the plugin has been beautifully designed to be elegant and simple, it can get somewhat tricky quite quickly. So with that, let's get to it. So I'm using several compositions and shape layers in all, and I'll explain why I'm not using pictures or graphics in a moment. But first, we have to open Newton, which is done under the composition menu. And from there, you will select Newton 3. Upon selecting the plugin, an entirely new window will open which contains the independent user interface of Newton. While it mirrors the design of After Effects, it operates a little bit differently, including shortcuts. However, we instantly have this pop-up box. And this is because the premium beat logo in our composition is made of several layers within one shape layer. And it's gonna ask us if we want that separated. By saying yes, it will separate these shapes into individual layers. Let's quickly look at our geography. It's divided into several smaller panels. We have our main preview window where we will watch back the physics simulation. To the left, we have our body and joint property panels, which will dictate how our bodies and joints react upon being met with the gravitational pull down. And to the right, we have our gravity settings. At the bottom, we have our bodies panel, which is essentially all the layers which have been imported from After Effects and a joint panel where any joints will sit. And then of course our render panel and other than the advanced settings tab there are no other pop-up menus or panels to work with this is it in the preview window upon pressing play the gravity settings which are dictated here are set in motion and the premium beat logo and the ball fall into infinity we can lessen or heighten the gravity and it will affect how fast or how slow the shapes drop or if they will drop at all the reason these objects wreck to gravity and fall to infinity is that they are a dynamic body type, which means these shapes instantly react to the gravity settings. And the reasons why they fall to infinity is that we don't have a shape layer to act as a floor. However, instead of returning to After Effects to create a shape to act as a floor, we can instead select the infinite ground button. Now, when pressing play, the premium beat blocks fall to the ground and the shapes react accordingly. The four parameters primarily set how the individual shapes react within Newton are body type, density, friction, and bounciness. We're gonna omit going over every body type for the time being, but we will look at them throughout the tutorial. But as just noted, a dynamic body type will instantly react to the gravity settings upon pressing play. So what do these settings refer to? Density refers to the mass of an object. And quite like real life, if you were to take two objects, one heavier, one lighter, in most circumstances, upon release, they're gonna hit the ground at the same time. However, the heavier object is gonna create more of a visual impact. To show an example like this, I've got a pre-created composition with two tennis balls and a weak table structure. If you can see the center, there's a little bit of a gap. So any sort of uh, heavy force should instantly break this table. So we're gonna go back into Newton and see how the density of an object will affect its surroundings. Uh, but first we have this little strange issue. Our circles have become angular. And this is because Newton likes things simple. The less processing, the better for everyone. But the problem with angular shapes is that they bounce and roll differently. For example, I'm just gonna make the table structures a dead body, and I'm gonna explain what that is in a moment. And if I place the circle on top of the other click play, we can see that when the circles start to roll off each other, there's a slight bump in its reaction. Now, perhaps if this was a high intensity scene, lots of things going on with complex shapes, the angular nature might be passable but for something like this, it's very noticeable. So we need to increase the mesh precision to regain the roundness of the original shape. However, just know if you are using complex shapes and you increase the mesh uh, to a high number, it is gonna be processor intensive. With that covered, before returning the table to its default state, I'm going to lower the density of the left ball to 0.1 and the density of the right ball to 20. 
And when I click play, there's no obvious difference, as is the same in most circumstances with physics. Yet as soon as we place the circles above the object, we can see the difference the density has. The shape with the density of 0.1 barely shakes the structure, and given that the center is not supported, it would only take the slight bit of force to break through, yet the ball with the density of 20 smashes through the structure. Next we have friction, and to demonstrate the properties of friction, I'm going to open another comp where I have two squares and two slopes for the squares to fall. However, look at what happens when I click play. The slopes interact with gravity, therefore we need to change the body type in the body type drop down menu. So while a dormant body may seem like an appropriate choice at first, it's not. While a dormant body may initially be static, as soon as another object touches it, it becomes dynamic. So instead we need to select static, and a static body will remain solid in Newton and override all other outside animations. Now when we click play, the slopes remain in place. So with the two squares, I'm going to decrease the left square to 0.1 and increase the friction to the right square of 2. And we can see that one square looks like it was made out of plastic and the other heavy stone. Finally, I'm going to reset the friction and you can do this on all properties by hitting this circle button, which represents reset. And I'm going to decrease the bounciness of this square to 0.1 and increase the bounciness of the second square to three. And upon play, one square acts as if it's made from stone and the other from rubber. Now, Newton doesn't support pictures or video clips. He uses shapes, text, and masks. If we were to import this picture, which is a PNG, so this alpha channel doesn't disturb anything in After Effects, right? Yet in Newton, it becomes a block instead. So what we need to do is create a shape that mirrors the image that you want to use. And I'll show you how to get back to this image and incorporate the Newton properties a little later. So I'm going to turn on my other layers here, and I've just got a shape layer to represent the background and our text, which is then going to fall onto this square. So let's go into Newton. I want the square to remain as it is, so I'm going to make that a static body type. I'm going to move the text up and slightly increase the bounciness so there's a little bit of a cool animation to it. And press play. Okay, that is not what we wanted to happen at all. And it's all down to the background there. So as I said, Newton works in 2D, not 3D. So even though we have this as our background layer, as soon as we press play, the layers that touch are organized so they appear in 2D space. So visually, you can have this block appear in front of the background shape. But as soon as you press play and the physics come into place, they physically can exist like this, so they get pushed aside and then the animation can start. So to fix this, we need to do something about the body type of the background. We know the dynamic body response to the gravity settings. We know that static means the shape is rooted in that space and that dormant means the shape is held into position until knocked. Therefore, we have to select from dead, aematic or kinematic. And as you might have guessed from using it earlier, it's dead. Now, upon making the layer dead, it's no longer reflected as part of the physics simulation. But if you have several layers and you don't want them to be a part of Newton and selecting each layer can be a pain to then make it dead. Likewise, we can move the layers uh, upon importing them into Newton so we can't group them together and then select them all as dead. Therefore, what we can do is hop out of Newton and hide the background layer. However, before we click out of Newton, we don't want to have to readjust and reconfigure all of our settings. So what we're going to do is go up to file and make sure that you select auto settings. Now, when you open Newton again, everything that we've just done will be saved. So let's jump back out. We're going to hide this background layer, jump back in. All of our settings are now preloaded and the background layer is no longer active. We then have kinematic and aematic to explore. These body properties both represent two ways in which a pre-animated shape is affected. So let's look at this example where I have an asteroid hitting this moon. The asteroid flies in from the right, it's been pre-animated, hits the moon, and then the moon, under the simulation of Newton, will react accordingly as it's a dormant layer. So I don't have to animate the moon here, and this is where the plugin really comes in at its best, is getting these specific sort of reactions and collisions, I should say. But this is space, and gravity is zero. And the kinematic, the asteroid will continue to fly after the initial frames because it was in a state of motion upon entering the simulation. But if I just add 5 gravity, we can actually see this better. So with kinematic, a body animated in After Effects with keyframes is not altered by the physics until the end of the animation. Whereas with aematic, the animation is instantly recognized 
but it will also fight with the gravity settings. However, if you would like to add direction to the initial start point of your simulation, it doesn't mean you have to create a keyframe uh, outside of After Effects. And what we can do is look at using velocity, direction and magnitude. Now, while there are settings to adjust this within the properties panel, I prefer using the designated tool, this icon, or by pressing P, and you can then go to shape, select the shape, and we can see a visual representation of the velocity direction. When you increase the distance, we can also see the velocity magnitude. Upon clicking play, it will be thrown as dictated. Finally, to export the simulation, we need to press play, let the animation come to completion, note the final frame of the final piece of movement, add that to the export end frame, hit render and let Newton do its thing. Upon completion, you will be taken back into After Effects and we'll find the completed simulation in a new composition. As each animation is a set keyframe, we can actually adjust the timing of certain moments by moving the layers. However, remember they will fall out of sync of any collisions with other shapes. To get our picture elements to act with the physics engine, all we need to do is make sure our graphical element is positioned directly on top of the simulated shape and then parent the image to the shape. And I think that just about covers the basics of Newton 3. And when I say basics, I'm being very generous because there is a lot more to this uh, uh, plugin than what we've covered today. Uh, but I think we do have to acknowledge that this is a $250 plugin or $300 for someone like myself in the EU who has to pay digital, digital tax. So uh, it's not going to be as accessible for everyone. But if you do want to dive deeper into this plugin uh, with more advanced tutorials or maybe even specific simulation requests, let us know in the comments and we'll hopefully dive into them a little bit into the future. So my name is Lewis with Premium Beat and I will catch you guys next time.